got their objective, they got what they wanted, and they're going to go ahead and fall back by a little bit, by, by something nice for themselves. And the concern coming into this mid game, coming into these fights, uh, Nijaki, you know, Vigar does have that great burst damage. He can, you know, just insta kill almost anyone if he's able to pick you off. He has that range advantage, but he's very cooldown dependent. And so, if they have all these tanks, if they have that kill ultimate where they can stall the game, maybe Curse is able to pick up one kill and then just reset the fight and be like, okay, we're, we'll start over in a second once Vigar's abilities are all off cooldown. Uh, but we are actually seeing TSM grouping towards. Baron and Reginald in the meantime he does have blue buff but he's pretty low mana so he needs to wait around for the regen a little bit. Um, you definitely will get low from Baron and that's not the best situation for a fight so they are kind of just waiting in the brush seeing if they can pick someone off for curse. X Special was in the Baron pit earlier sweeping for wards he did see that it is clean so curse has no wards in the area just at this moment they do have the or both teams have oracles so any wards they can manage to find if they actually make their way over there but the, they do not know that the Baron is warded right out in front because Elements decided to go ahead and back. Yeah, and so once again, I mean, PSM, I, I feel like they can pressure Baron, but they, you know, they definitely don't want to be grouped up in that AoE. Vigar would be able to just stun the whole entrance and, you know, maybe pick up a quick fight win there. So that would definitely be dangerous for them. So they're really looking to pick someone off with Urgot, see if they can get a kill, uh, then see what they can pressure. and. Uh, Odd one, you know, definitely not taking too much damage, so that's, you know, pretty nice to be tanky there. Dyrus just going to zone off Cobelter a little bit, start farming this bottom lane. Both of them do have their teleport up, so they can get to those mid fights. Yep. Dyrus meets Cobelter in bot lane, and Cobelter says, oh no, we've, we've played this game twice before. Ah, no, we're not playing that. We're not doing that anymore. But TSM now, once again, clearing wards around the Baron area. And KX does have a Guardian Angel right now, so once he gets the swap he needs, if he does manage to die in the middle of the next team fight, he will be coming back, so it's not going to be that much of an issue. But TSM, they want the vision around Baron. They know, they got, they got an idea. Elements, he was poisoned, so he is falling back. But TSM trying to force, trying to force the fight. We got vision on Elements, he is out in front. They're not going to press the matter. Stun going down from Nijaki just as a preventive measure. Ult going down from Gameplank on Baron, but no one's there. So TSM, they know that ult is now down, so they're gonna go ahead and uh, they're gonna go ahead and start it. Yeah, I mean they can keep very high health while they're doing Baron. They can do it pretty quickly. So, you know, Curse definitely needs to be a little more aware. Elements is very low right now, so it's not the best situation for Curse. They don't really have a full head-on engaged team like TSM does. The key is if they can pick off Reginald. Yeah, Actually, we see the teleport in from Gangplank, but at least in the meantime, is coming in as well. There's the ultimate swapping with Nijaki. Reginald very close to going down, but the ultimate from Janna, able to keep him alive. And now TSM is definitely winning this fight. They're going to be able to pick up the kill on Reginald, but now TSM is in a good position. We do have the GA on the Chaos. He will be able to get the slow, and there's two kills, and now they're going to be able to pick up the Baron. So TSM taking a commanding lead in this game. One for four. That's a, that's, that's a pretty good math. Any anyway, you cut it, and uh, Cop is the only one remaining, and uh, not even going to attempt to try and steal this uh, steal this Baron. is going to take it convincingly. They'll take it back home with them. Red Bulls will not have it, but uh, you know what? They're such a huge lead right now. I don't think it even really matters. They're going to go ahead and grab this buff, go back and shop, and just probably push right up the mid at their next opportunity. And now the big concern for TSM, because they do have that short-range team, uh, normally they wouldn't have a very good pushing team, but because they are so far ahead right now, because they do have Udyr and Lee Sin so tanky, they can just walk right up and tank these towers, and here we see Udyr uh, Dyrus doing it. He knows that he can just walk up, not have to worry about the tower damage, so the fact that they don't have the range doesn't really matter. We see Nijaki hardly doing any damage at all to the odd one, so TSM gets to be extremely aggressive. They're going to be able to steal this blue buff, and uh, Nijaki, pretty good for cooldown reduction, so, you know, he should be okay, but it's still going to be nice for Chaos to be able to have that, have that spam ability when they're sitting outside of a tower. Chaos going ahead, picking up the enemy blue buff for himself. That's going to help him out immensely over these next, uh, next few moments where they still have a Baron. Everyone's going back. They're going to go ahead and shop. Frozen Heart on Urgot. Randuin's on Udyr. We got a lot of stuff coming in for TSM. They've got, they've got some pretty hefty wallets right now, so he's going to go ahead and spend. Lee Sin actually has, Dyrus has 3k that he needs to spend still. I wonder what he's going to pick up. Probably going to finish up the uh, the Frozen Mallet. Frozen Mallet, Warmogs, Atmas, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good combo. It's an okay combo. 
And now there, there it shows the weakness of Curse's team. They don't have that great late game sustain damage. That's you know the big thing with Kale. She's not a Kog'Maw, she's not a Tristana. She isn't going to have that burst damage to take down all these high HP heroes. So because TSM uh, has these uber tanks right now, they, Curse just doesn't have enough damage to deal with them. So Udyr and Lee Sin, they get to be extremely aggressive. They you know can just push right down these towers and Curse you know, just doesn't have enough damage to deal with those tanks. Curse has no choice but to defend for these next few moments. Baron Buff, how far along are we? We're, the, we're, we're just about exactly halfway through at this point. So we got to see what TSM decides to do with the buff. They're taking a lot of objectives. They're getting their own buffs and the enemy buffs. But we got to see them pushing up the mid. Chaos is here leading the charge. As I think, does he have an elixir to on him? I think he does. He has to do a red yeah, elixir. Blowing. Red, red mushroom. Red mushroom does passion please. But uh, they will decide to push up Cold Altars out in front. They're trying to clear the mini lane as fast as they can. And uh, I think uh, we see Udyr here just taking, taking Dragon for himself. No big deal. But again, it will be interesting to see whether TSM feels aggressive enough, if they feel like they have a big enough advantage, that they can just walk up and tank the turrets. Because uh, it, it's close. I mean, you definitely don't want to allow Curse to win a fight. Very quickly, it could go back in their favor. But they don't really have this, a, a strong poking team that can you know, just wear down the tower. They don't have those kind of ranged DPSers like uh, you normally see. So that's really going to hurt them here. They kind of need to just go all in for it when they make the decision you know, to decide to push. Or if Lee Sin's going to split push, because they're definitely strong enough right now that they could send someone out split pushing even without the teleport. They could almost win a 4v5 fight against Curse at this point. You know, I just noticed too, Dyrus now has a guardian angel of his own. He's got 4,000 health already. If you do manage to somehow kill him, he's still going to be coming back. He has the lifesteal for some of his abilities. I, he's he's going to be an immovable object. He hasn't even died yet. Yeah, and that's going to be a serious concern for Curse once again, because they just they don't have that kind of damage up. But if they can pick off one of these champions, though, if they can pick off Reginald, uh, that's really you know their only target, Janna. Uh, would be a strong pickoff for him, but the concern is if they get rid of Janna, they don't really get rid of any of TSM's damage. And actually, we probably, oh, I was considering, wondering if we're going to see an ultimate there, but some great harass damage going on from Chaos there, uh, wearing down Nijaki a little bit, and they're definitely preparing themselves for that great fight coming up shortly. Reggie has a quick silver sash for himself, just in case he gets caught by that Vigar stun, but he has used it already. And with all these GAs, all this tankiness on TSM right now, pretty much your only two targets for a, an amazing engage are Reggie and the Special. And you know what? The rest of the TSM, they're playing, they're, they're just like a big football team. You got the big guys up front, and the Curse just cannot break that front line. They cannot get to that creamy nougat center that is TSM. Yeah, I mean, they're already so tanky, and then they have this full shield team, Udyr, Lee Sin, Urgot, Janna. Uh, it's really tough to break through it. I'm, you know, kind of curious whether or not we'll see them just jump on the turret. The Baron is down, so they will be susceptible to, you know, that damage a little bit more. They won't regen it back, and so Curse actually just, you know, pushing down, get all the lanes pushed so that there's not the threat of TSM taking control of your jungle. Uh, they know that they need to make something happen, so they're trying to see if they can pick anyone off, get some kills, get back into this game. Yeah, Curse was about to head the top lane. I was like, oh, wait, Dyrus is there. Well, okay, change our mind. Let's go to mid. We don't, want to, we don't want to be messing with that very tanky, tanky blind monk. But they're, they're a little bit scattered now. They're a little bit indecisive where they want to go. They're all hovering around the deck of the map, and they're being a little bit caught out. Dyrus is here. Will we get? No, they will not decide to uh, press the matter. But odd one, Chaos going around through the jungle. If Curse decides to stick around, it could be really bad for them. We get one. If we get the swap from Chaos, it, it could be game. It could be. Yeah, and even if they don't, Baron is going to be up in about a minute, so TSM, they can pressure that Baron. They know that in an open field fight, they're easily going to take care of Curse. So if they can, you know, force Curse over there, TSM really won't get take too much damage from Baron. They don't have to worry about getting low uh, just because of all their shields. So they can sit there, bait out a fight in the open, and then, you know, maybe end the game quickly, take that Baron for an inhibitor, maybe even just straight up the Nexus. Yep, Ottawa and Kax were staying in the jungle. They were waiting to see if they could bait them out with Reginald. Didn't work. Curse was like, no, 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 we were, we're not playing that game. They decided to back off and so we were like, you know what, we're just gonna go ahead and push bottom. We gotta try and see if we can't take this inhibitor and tower. And they're gonna go ahead, wait for the minion wave, and push once again. Crumbs, Nijaki Elements here to defend. Top just shot the guns on the wall the Elixir. And TSM, they have the wave. They're going to see if they can't push this. Chaos out in front. And they've got the stun. 
coming in from Night Jack. You're not going to do a whole lot with it. But I'm looking, I'm looking for that swap. Can we get that swap of KX onto someone juicy? Now they're going to go ahead and decide to go wander back towards mid. See if they can't bait somebody out. Kiax out in front, trying to get away. He has a up to the bottom. Out guard. Gangplank ult going down. Trying to slow him a little bit. Not taking advantage of Kiax. Flashes in. Gets the ult on Nijek. He flashes away. Dark's now coming in. The ult still going down. We got the stuns. Kiax will be reviving. Cobalter does fall. And now Crumbs is behind. Elvis fine. Top Luki is ready. Let's get away. Nijek, he falls. Dyrus making work of everyone. Crumbs falls as well. They should be able to take this tower and hit Pop. Can't really do too much about this. I think this might just be game. Yeah, this probably is game. They are at least going to get an inhibitor. They probably can push down this Nexus, but there it is. TSM, you know, they know in the open field they can get that Urgot swap. They're just way too tanky. We saw a couple of GAs proc, but uh, Curse just not able to do it. So they're actually not going to go for the Nexus. They had 30 seconds left. They could, probably could have done it. It's very close to say whether or not Kale could have defended against them. But getting two inhibitors is definitely going to, you know, allow them to solidify that game. And then they still have the Baron. If they get, they were going to want to get back quickly so that, you know, Curse can't counter, but they will have that Baron to force another open field fight or even just take the Baron and then just end the game. They could they could have made the attempt on Nexus, but you know what, they're playing it safe. It's like, you know what, we're at IPL4, there's a lot of money on the line. We want to play it safe, we'll take these two inhibitors, we'll grab Baron, we'll come back around when we're all healed and try it again because they're ridiculously in the lead. There's no reason to risk anything at this point especially in a venue like this, in a tournament like this, with all these big name teams. Yeah, and so we are actually seeing Curse group up. They probably could have been a little bit faster about heading over to that Baron. Uh, you know, they're not going to have enough time to take it. TSM is definitely going to be in range in time. Curse actually doesn't even know if they had recalled yet, you know, because they didn't have that vision. They were all pretty low, but Curse needs to get back in their base and, you know, keep these waves pushed so they just don't have the opportunity to come defend against this Baron. They will back off for a second. We'll see whether or not TSM goes for it. Uh, they probably will, and then, you know, just continuing with that push into the Nexus. Curse only has one ward down at the moment right there. Their vision is immensely stifled at the moment, and TSM is there in the Baron pit, taking it down, should be down shortly. Curse has an idea. They don't exactly have all the they want, but they have an angling from out in front. Pops the ult, trying to see what he can do. Varus is there to do the damage. He needs to do elements with the ult in the bush. Odd one will punch him in the face, get rid of it. And now Varus is there, and Nijak being swapped with Chaos. He is in the thick of things. He will fall. Mundo falls. Elements is in back. He goes down as well, and Pobelter caught out by the bear. He will die shortly as well. And now we have Pop once again alone on his own. Not much to do there. TSM has pretty much gotten this one in the bag at this point. Yeah, TSM taking game number one. GG TSM. They will be pushing down the Nexus here, so congratulations for that game number one. But we'll have to see what Curse is going to be bringing in this next matchup. TSM just absolutely dominant that game. They, you know, had it secured almost the entire game. Vigar, you know, never really got a chance to get any kills. TSM being pretty safe there. Uh, we saw, there you know, go. Reginald getting caught one time, but TSM taking game number one. TSM taking game number one, extremely convincingly. Good job for them. But you know what? See, this is very. They, oh, look at that! Look at. See, that's that's what happens. That's what happens when Dyrus goes on Lee Sin. That is exactly what happens. People die. Yeah, the, Lee Sin is definitely one of those really strong top lane champions. He's one of the strongest uh, laners in the game. They did ban out the Olaf. Olaf is actually one of those you know strong counters to Lee Sin. Yeah. He does eat through the shield. Do very well against him. Uh, but then, you know, Pobelter not taking one of those kind of